I think we'll start with uh, me asking Frederick some questions about what he's learned uh, in working with uh, these Orange deployments in 11 different countries in terms of organizational design. Uh, and then I'd actually like to open it up to the group here a bit and maybe get some comments from uh, different mobile money practitioners in the room about what they've learned about organizational design and what works well there. So a couple slides to uh, motivate uh, why we think organizational structure is actually important. Um, so one question that we, uh, we hear a lot when it comes to org design is should mobile money be a separate business unit um, within an MO organization? And I think the evidence is now mounting that, in fact, the answer is yes, it should be. What we've actually found is that 85% of the fast-growing deployments in the world run mobile money as a separate business unit, while only 54% of the slower-growing deployments run it as a separate business unit. So there's going to be some uh, causality both ways when it comes to this, uh, but there seems to be some sort of relationship between how organizations choose to uh, uh, design themselves and the success you're eventually going to have. So with that in mind, let's uh, hear from Frederick. So maybe Frederick, can you start by uh, just giving us a little background on Orange Money? OK, thank you. So hello, everyone. Uh, we launched Orange Money uh, in 2009, the very beginning. And now we are launched in uh, 11 countries. The last one was Guinea two months ago. And at the very beginning of the project, in fact, uh, we understood that Orange Money was not a classic value-added service uh, and that it was clearly strategic. But at the same time, uh, we launched it a little bit like a, va a mobile value-added service, which means that uh, mostly the people in charge of mobile money were people that were formerly uh, value-added service manager or at least people that were product manager. And at one point we found that this was a weakness uh, because those people, they're used to, to build new solutions, to, to launch new service, but at what point uh, the run part of the service is not that well managed. And for mobile money, this, this is a nonsense. So we need to have a, a very strong team after launch to build the run, etc. So that is the first, first issue. Second thing is that there was a, clearly a focus on product, also because the story for, with the product was not that easy. But we realized that in order to be successful, um, the key success factor is clearly not the product. We need to have a product up and running. But at the end of the day, the success will come from efficient processes, from simplicity of the customer journey, and from distribution. So if we have someone that is uh, under the CMO and that is a project manager, perhaps he won't be able to deal with this efficiently. So this is why we say, to, to our CEOs, okay, you should look at the ways that you handle your broadband activity and you should, you should handle mobile money the same way. So clearly, uh, mobile money is a new activity. It's, uh, it's clearly a new line of business, as broadband is, and even more because we are entering the financial services domain. The competitors are, are not the same. The regulation is specific, so we need to have a specific team to address this at the right level. So we told the CEOs, you should have a business unit. And also, the guy in charge of mobile money should, be should have direct report to the CEO. So let's talk a bit more about distribution, because uh, I think we all know here that it's actually one of the, the biggest success factors to mobile money is getting distribution right. Uh, and we've largely seen two approaches uh, from MNOs to cracking distribution organizationally. And, and one is actually managing it within the existing distribution structure that exists for airtime, is one approach. Mm -hmm. And the second approach is actually creating a separate and independent entity to do mobile money distribution. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about which approach uh, Orange has taken yeah. and, and why they've taken that approach? That's a very key question. Uh, at what point we understand, okay, now the key success factor is distribution. 
So it was really tempting to say, we have this strong organization uh, that is a distribution organization in charge of dealing with uh, mobile airtime, with classic GSM distribution. We should rely on it because there are plenty of people, they have skills, they have competencies, they have budget, so we should rely on it. But in fact, uh, this is not the best way because it's very complicated to make them really do the job on mobile money for, for two reasons. First one is that um, the activity on mobile money for the two or three first years uh, is really tiny if you consider uh, the number of point of sale or if, if you consider the revenues. It's really tiny compared to the core business. So it will be very difficult to engage uh, the CCO and all the teams on mobile money. And second point is that um, mobile money is a different business with a different business model and you need a different way of uh, distributing uh, mobile money. And if you rely on the classic GSM distribution, you will need to have very uh, hard, hard work in training the people to make them understand what is range money distribution. Because otherwise, they, they will launch distribution exactly the same way as they do with their time. And at the end of the day, you will fail because the business model is different, because also the level of what you have to the kind of distributors that you have to choose is different. Uh, the level of exigence is, is very different, different because uh, there is the issue of KYC and you need a level of quality that is very different. Right. So selling uh, mobile money is very different than selling airtime in other exactly. ways. Exactly. Yeah. So how do you, uh, I imagine it's a difficult sell when you need to go to a local CEO and say, you know, I know you have this big sales mm -hmm. structure around GSM, Let's now create a new sales structure entirely um, that's going to cover the same geographic area, but just have them do this mobile money product. H how do you go about convincing a CEO that that's the, mm. the right thing to do and devote the resources to making that possible? Yeah, you're right. That's not easy, especially when the CCO is willing also to be part of the, of the story. Um, to think, first thing is that uh, you need to, to make the CEO understand that uh, the effort that has to be, to be made is not related to the revenue of the first year, and th that you, you need to have uh, the teams to create the new distribution network. So, because usually, uh, in fact, you, you, you put the resources wh when you are expecting uh, revenues. So in the classic business, it's a one-year choice. So you, you make your budget, okay, what are your revenue next year? So I, I will, I will give you a lot of resources. So here you have to say, okay, you need to, to put the resources that are required to make the effort. So, so you, you need to say, okay, wh what do you need to put in place? And then when you have this discussion, you can have the CEO understand all the work that has to be done. And then it's got two choices. First choice is to have dedicated teams to make sure they are 100% committed to mobile money. Second thing is to say, okay, the whole chain and distribution teams should be incentivized on mobile money, starting with CCO. So I imagine the, uh, the group has a pretty big role to play in actually convincing CEOs of this point. Um, yeah. Can you talk a bit more about what the group actually does um, to, to help Opcos in, uh, in succeeding in mobile money? What role they play? Yeah, you're very right. I think that first point, in fact, is not about what we do, it's just what we say, is that our CEO, so the Stéphane Richard, uh, is clearly committed to mobile money. And every time he speaks, he speaks of orange money. And I think this is perhaps the, the best value that the group brings. It's just strategic focus and gives the direction. Because uh, for, for a CEO, uh, if he's got a short-term view, sometimes he will be reluctant to invest massively on mobile money. So what we bring is a strategic view and to, to say, okay, in three years, what would be your benefit of having invested in mobile money? Where will you be if you, if you did not? So first thing is clearly uh, a clear commitment and strategy. And, then and I guess uh, one more question for me and then I'll uh, open it up to the group here. Um, so we heard in the fraud and risk forum how mobile money is, is similar but different. Um, and I think the, the same probably applies to, to the core of the business. Um, 
which skills do you find that are, are you may need to supplement from the outside uh, to actually win in mobile money? So there's skills that don't currently exist inside the mobile money, inside the M&O organization. They need to bring from the outside if you want to succeed in financial services. I, I think that processes and security clearly is something that is that is very specific and that you can save time if you if you find some skills that come from a, from banking environment or so but from the beginning we started to work with uh, with banks so this was a way also to to avoid th this uh, this difficulty and i think th the main point is that when you hire the head of mobile money uh, you should really hire someone that is more a CEO profile that, that rather than a product manager profile. Hmm. And that's not always easy to find. Um, so I think maybe we'll uh, open up to the group a bit. And uh, I guess before we do questions. Well, I'm, I'm Azad from Grameen Phone, Bangladesh. And our approach was also almost similar, but uh, it is within the same organization. We have a separate uh, financial service organization directly reporting to CEO with core PNL responsibility. So it's almost similar, but um, internally we have outsourcing options under SLA uh, to different organizations of the core business, which supports the mobile financial services. So I think our management also understand the same principle that this is a separate um, customer base we are targeting with different kind of services, with different regulation, regulatory requirements, and uh, it needs different focus uh, or right focus to serve the customer better. And, and is Grameen Phone being a separate entity, is that more driven by regulation or is that more driven by a internal strategy to make it a separate business with a separate mentality? Uh, this is internal, not regulatory pressure or anything like that. Great. Yeah, um, in terms of uh, MTN Uganda, we, we, um, our, our approach in terms of uh, organizational design is slightly different from uh, what you have. Um, However, um, structurally, the way we, we, we're designed is, st is structuring mobile money through the S&D arena. And um, talking about the fact that the sales and distribution plays a very critical role in terms of mobile money acceleration. Um, the way we design it and the way we thought through the execution makes, ex uh, make, makes a difference here. So from the point of view of um, route to market and drive, we learn quickly that in terms of the route to market for, for mobile money distribution, we could not leverage on the existing mobile money, uh, sorry, existing um, telecoms structure. So we quickly evolved into taking gear and shifting gear and moving into a track which says have built a, a completely different agent network um, and try and force competition to the traditional um, telecom business and drive traction for mobile money. But increasingly, as you progress, you kind of realize the need to have a lot more because it is significant in terms of revenue, it is significant in terms of customer numbers, and you need to rethink the kind of organizational design that you would be able to support in terms of scaling up because the request requirement for, for risk management and other elements requires that you need to put it up there in terms of the uh, having visibility within the organization for mobile money. Uh, but I'm also thinking, you know, long term, um, is there opportunity for also uh, some level of distribution consolidation? Because as you move through uh, in terms of maturity, you get to a point where your existing distribution network understands uh, mobile money and comes up to speed because currently your traditional telecom distributors are saying that, hey, guys, we need more from mobile money, okay? Whilst from the beginning, um, they find it to be very difficult and also uh, in terms of revenue, not very attractive uh, for them. So yes, uh, while the design is critical um, today in terms of how uh, it flows into senior management. We also need to think into the future and ask ourselves that at a certain point in terms of this journey, uh, would there be some need for you know, leveraging the existing um, distribution network? 
Yeah, thank you, Shaibu, for that. Uh, I think Shaibu brings up a couple of very good points there um, that, that I'd like to actually echo a bit uh, with some research that we did. Um, you know, first, that mobile money needs to kind of be incubated as something separate when it comes to distribution at the beginning because it doesn't stack up to the core business right out of the gate. Um, but as Shaibu said, and as I, I suspect is happening in MTN Uganda right now, um, as it becomes a more significant part of the business, uh, there may be some possibility to reintegrate it uh, with existing business lines without losing the attention and focus that, that Frederick alluded to. Yes, and I think that especially with the, the, the share of the top up that is made through mobile money, when it becomes significant, then the question is should we bring again uh, the distribution from mobile money and the classic distribution network clearly. So it's, it's a dynamic evolution and at what point there should be only one distribution.